All right, so first up is Marshall Nash. The problem with this is why not Clowney? Why are the Cowboys trying to cheap it out? If we're trying to win a championship, then go for it and pay. Marshall, I get where you're coming from. Now, the report was that the Cowboys were not going to offer Clowney their, any type of money. And his market might be down to 17, 18. The Cowboys just don't want to pay that. They could do it if they wanted to. They're simply choosing not to. The Cowboys have not been big spenders in free agency. So I may not agree with it. I know you don't, Marshall. That's just the Cowboys' mindset right now. What do you think Poe's contract will look like? Um, Poe's contract is available. I don't remember which video it was. Was it Sunday's video? I think it was Sunday's video. We broke down the Dontari Poe contract. Two years. It'll come in more around 9.5 million with some incentives on top of that. That's the deal for Dontari Poe. It's up to 10.5 million. All right, Alex Manuel, will the defensive line shut down any run game? I hope so. That's clearly the Cowboys' plan right now, is to invest more in the run defense. As you guys know, I have been the proponent of Fatties Only 2020. Buy your T-shirt today. They are available right now on the channel. Just scroll down. You can see one. Gerald McCoy, Dontari Poe. Individually, two very good run stoppers. And Poe, by the way, a big time body. He's a true fatty only. Tyrone Crawford might not be 300 pounds, but guess what? He's a good run stopper. Demarcus Lawrence was the best run stopper on that roster last year. So as a base unit to stop the run, that four on your screen, that's actually pretty good. Like if we're being honest here, that's a bit of a change from, you know, asking your defense tackles to get a field and then not doing the best in the end. All right, Mr. Malefic, with the signing, Tom, do you think cornerback is a lock at 17? That is if the deal goes through. I don't necessarily think that Alden Smith guarantees you're not going to draft an edge because you didn't guarantee him anything. But I do know the Cowboys would prefer to add a corner early. If C.J. Henderson's on the board, I kind of think he's the pick. Now, we'll see what ends up happening. And I'm not going to say anything is a lock with, you know, a couple weeks before the draft that who knows if the board's going to fall. But as of right now, I think cornerback is a fair favorite target for the Cowboys at 17. All right, Jim Laws wants to know how good a football shape is Smith in? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Now, uh, Jay Glazer, who broke the news, mentioned this a while ago that Smith was getting in shape, but... I don't know what kind of shape Alden Smith is in. Frankly, we might not know until whenever camp starts up again. And he's certainly not in football shape. You can be in shape. You don't really get into full-fledged football shape till after camp. Like, it takes some time to go from being in good shape to being at the, I can play an entire game in, in an NFL and not be gassed halfway through. So we'll see about Alden Smith. I, I just, I don't know what's going to happen here. There is uncertainty with this deal. You haven't guaranteed him anything. There's no guarantee that Alden Smith makes that roster. Do not forget about that. So with that in mind, give me your one word reaction to Alden Smith signing with the Dallas Cowboys on a one-year deal worth up to $4 million. 2 million base and no guaranteed money. Let me know your one word reaction. I was shocked. I was stunned. I was surprised. Unexpected. All of that works. WTF works as well. I just, I wasn't ready for this signing. It really did kind of come out of nowhere. I, I was a bit surprised that Alden Smith joined the Dallas Cowboys. I see a variety of, of reactions coming in here from both positive to negative. I understand that. Like, that's the reality for Alden Smith, that we don't know what, what we're going to get. Uncertainty ends up being, I think, a very good one as well. That is what this is. You're, you're spinning this as a low-risk, high-reward type of signing. Now, on the flip side, there is still some risk involved. But with no guaranteed money, I do feel better about that deal. All right, Jeremy Bramlett wants to know about a 3-4 defense. Mike McCarthy has said, that the Dallas Cowboys are going to use a four-base defensive unit. And I believe that for 2020. I think that will be the base. However, you will see three, four principles. And there will be at times, and there were times last year, by the way, that you use a three-defensive line unit. 
And there will be times that you stand up to Marcus Lawrence and others. You will be more multiple. But I believe McCarthy, when he, when he says that the base defense will be for defensive linemen. Can you be more multiple? Should you be? Yes to both. Can you use three defensive linemen? Yes. Will you ask your defensive tackles to be a little bit more of the run cloggers, the two gappers instead, as opposed to just penetrating upfield like you did under Rod Marinelli? Yes. So it will be a different 4-3 defense if that is the base, but it, I don't think it's going to be quite a full-fledged 3-4 quite yet. Zeus C says Lamb at 17. If he's there, I'm in. If I can get CD Lamb, who's probably going to be a top 10 guy for me when it's all said and done on my big board at 17, yeah, I'm in. I am all the way in on that type of deal. Matthew McQueen official says, best Cowboys YouTube channel ever. Tom I'm down here with a man. Matthew, thank you very much. I really appreciate that, my friend. I also appreciate the super chat as well. So thank you very much, Matthew. And if you guys have not already, hit that big red button and subscribe. There is no other Cowboys YouTube channel media-wise has as many followers as we do, as many subs as we do. So if you want to be a part of the number one Cowboys YouTube channel out there, hit that big red button and subscribe. We're not going anywhere. The daily videos will continue to come. So hit that big red button and subscribe today. We do rumors. we got a whole bunch of draft talk coming up. We'll do some simulcasting before the NFL draft as well. So join the number one Cowboys YouTube channel. Hit that big red button. Destroyer Doggy, speaking of longtime watchers here, with these free agent players the Cowboys have, how far will the Cowboys go next season? Come back into me after the draft. This is a very pitiful, pit or not pitiful, pivotal draft for the Dallas Cowboys. If they bomb this draft, they're going to be in trouble. That's the reality. If they do well, well you've set yourself up, up for some more success there. So check in after the draft. It is a key draft for the Cowboys. They've got to get these picks right. Otherwise, no matter who you pay at quarterback, you're not going to do anything if your draft classes are bad. You have to do that well in the NFL. All right, get to our next live Q&A question here from Jerwin Young. Do you think Mike McCarthy is having uh, a pushback on Dak because he might think Dak could fit his system? Look, the Cowboys want to get the Dak deal done. I still think they're going to. I know that they've botched this because they haven't got it done yet. I don't, like McCarthy mentioned that he loves Dak Prescott. I don't see any reason to not believe him when he says that. So I think McCarthy wants Dak. Frankly, I don't think McCarthy would have taken this job if he thought Dak wasn't going to be on this roster because why would he want to enter a situation where there is no franchise quarterback and I'm going to top in the draft? That's not great there. King J with the limited sports content on ESPN and FS1. It has been my saving grace. Thank you, Tom. King, I appreciate that. We got you guys covered. We're not going anywhere. The videos will continue to come here around the Dallas Cowboys. The draft's coming up here in a little bit. And then, of course, we're getting ready for training camp as well. Breakouts and depth chart breakdowns, all kinds of stuff for you guys. So join. So everyone be like King J and subscribe today. Cullen Craig, if the Cowboys don't sign a wide receiver, I don't think they're going to right now, what's the latest round you wait to draft a receiver? It's a really good draft class. I think you can get a good player in round four. If you wait beyond round four, not sure things are going to turn out that well for you. And just in terms of the players left. So by the time you get to round four, I think you got to find a receiver. The good news is even if you wait that long, I think you'll be able to make it work. CJP says in three, do Joe Jackson or Jalen Jokes have any chance to start during their rookie contracts? I think we'll see, right? We'll see how they develop. With where they are at right now, as players know, Jalen Jelks was an IR stash last season. Joe Jackson didn't make a huge impact for this team. Frankly, their goal right now is not to start. Their goal right now is to make the roster. They are not guaranteed anything right now for the Cowboys. So they're going to have to compete for their roles. I would not be surprised if one of them got cut. You're talking about a fifth-round pick and a seventh-round pick. So for the Cowboys, they are not guaranteed anything quite yet. JB97, do you think the Cowboys will add more free agents? Um, 
I think, yeah, but they might not come until after the NFL draft. A lot of these other veteran guys, I think they're going to try to wait and see and see what the market looks like after the draft. I think that could be a path to the Cowboys, and you might be able to find some good value there as well. Got a deal for you guys from Fanatics. Cowboys jerseys are on sale. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. Not just Amari Cooper. They've got Dak Prescott as well. They've got Zeke Elliott as well. And oh, by the way, if you want to get maybe an Alden Smith jersey, guess what, folks? Custom jerseys are also included on this deal. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. That is chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. So check the comments, check the description. We've got that link in there for you guys. It is a fantastic deal. It only lasts for a little bit longer. So get in while you still can at chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. All right, J-Dog R wants to know, should we trade up and get Simmons? Of course, he means Isaiah Simmons, the athlete do-it-all defensive star from Clemson. If Isaiah Simmons starts to slide and he's available, I'm starting to pick up the phone around pick number eight or nine, maybe number seven, then I have interest. Because Isaiah Simmons is the top three, top five player for me. If I can get that guy, that's really intriguing to me. So I would not, I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't think it does, frankly. But if he starts to slide or Akuda or maybe even Javon Kinlaw or Derek Brown, but probably not those two, then I consider picking up the phone and saying, hey, what's it going to cost me to get up to get that guy? Mitch Snyder, where do you think Clowney's bottom line is with the Cowboys pursue? Clowney wanted 20. He has since dropped it back down to more of a 17, 18 million. Even if it's down at 15, I'm not convinced the Cowboys pursue. I would like them to. I wouldn't mind it. I just don't think that you're going to be able to get Clowney. I think he'll end up signing a potentially one-year deal with maybe it's 16, 17 million somewhere else. So if you want Clowney, I'm not going to get my hopes up for him. King J again, are the Cowboys signing players like Alden Smith to avoid giving up comp picks or is it more of a salary cap issue? Well, the Cowboys are playing the comp pick game, but they are not, they don't believe in spending big in free agency. That has been made very clear by the Stephen Jones led and Will McClay led front office. They're not going to spend big on it. Now, Alden Smith does not impact the comp pick formula. Gerald McCoy did, but that was canceled out by Malik Collins. Don Tari Poe, however, did not impact the comp pick. So I think in this particular instance, although everything is at play here, I think this has more to do with the Cowboys thinking they might be able to strike gold with Alden Smith. So grade this signing for me. A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Do you love the Alden Smith signing? Do you absolutely hate it because you just don't like him, period? Let me know in the comments. I am open to any and all options here. Normally, I feel a little bit more confident about one player. This could work. It could end up being a completely non-factor for the season. So we'll see, right? I see Bs. I see Cs. I see Ds. I think I maybe saw an A in there as well. I see an F too. I see everything. That's not a huge surprise to me, guys, because I don't quite know how exactly this will turn out. I'll give the Cowboys credit for being aggressive, but maybe incomplete is the right grade for this one. All right, longtime watcher Bijan Missouri says, is Danny Amendola a trade target? If so, what the price? No, the Lions re-signed him. You, this is not Madden where you re-sign a player and then trade him away for a pick. So I don't see Danny Amendola being shopped. And frankly, in this receiver draft class, I am totally fine not signing anybody right now. You can revisit that after the draft if you don't like the guy that you end up getting. Just get someone in the draft. You will find somebody, be it in round one, round two, round three, heck, even in round four, there will be value there. Colin Craig, would you rather release Tyrone Crawford to save money and sign a player like Clay Matthews or even bring Crawford back for cheaper? I would like to get Tyrone Crawford's $9 million cap hit, $1 million of which is guaranteed, down more to $5 million or $4 million. I think that's reasonable. But, look, Crawford does a lot of dirty work that you guys don't always appreciate, which is fine. I understand he's, he's, he's not a stats stuffer, 
But that defensive line is better with Crawford out there. If you cut Crawford and sign Clay Matthews only on the field, I don't think you're any better. I really don't think that you are. However, I wouldn't mind bringing him back cheaper. And I, I could, you could still do the matters. In my way, from, from the money side of it, you're fine on money. You have cap space. You can add more cap space with ease. So it's not a, a trying to save money thing right now for Crawford. You'll be okay. There were a lot of these. Baby Big Lou hasn't played since 2015. We should have signed Dez. They are connected in exactly zero ways, guys. There is no connection between the two. One plays edge rusher. One plays receiver. Like, there's just there's just no connection there. If you want Dez, you can still go sign Dez. All right? We can do that after the draft because I'm not going to sign him right now because he's not healthy. Wasn't been healthy for a while. Like, two completely different scenarios there, guys. Tim Fowler, Alden Smith, or Randy Gregory? I will take Gregory of the two because I've seen him play more recently. Um, I've seen him have more success recently. I don't think it's going to be a competition between those guys. I don't think. I think there'll be a general competition. But the Cowboys certainly have invested more in Randy Gregory than they have Alden Smith in the past. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.